and welcome here with us today. My name is Lori Gill. I'm the founder and clinical director of the Attachment and Trauma Treatment Center for Healing. And I'm so excited to have um, Stephen Terrell here with us today. Uh, Stephen is the co-author of Nurturing Resilience, the founder of Transforming the Experience Based Brain, and he's also an adoption and developmental trauma specialist. Stephen was a, a speaker for us and trainer for us at one of our past events, and uh, I was really grateful that he was open to coming and sharing a tip or a technique that may be helpful during this time to promote emotional regulation and wellness. So, um, Steve, if it's okay with you, I'll turn it over to you and let you do a little introduction and, okay. uh, and share a technique that you think may be helpful. All right. Thank you for having me, Lori. It's always wonderful to be in Canada, even virtually. Mm. It's a nice place to go. Absolutely beautiful. And I think that, you know, I'm still seeing clients in my office, well, not in my office, I'm seeing them virtually, and I still have an active practice. And what I'm hearing so much and so often from families, from uh, adults that I see who have experienced developmental trauma is this fear of isolation, this fear of us going into this place where I might not get out of we know that there's a triangle of safety. And in that triangle of safety, there's context. And then the next part of that is after the context, we wanna uh, be able to find an expression of ourself to where um, connection can begin to happen. But figuring out the connection of ourself takes choices. And it takes the ability to have choices. And if we're already living and working and experiencing life without the full capacity to do experience it, because we're using so many parts of ourselves just to say to stay safe, to find safety, um, sometimes we don't even know what safety means. We have some thought and our idea in our head, like, oh, maybe it'd be this beautiful place, or we're going to go somewhere and it's going to show up, but really when we go into safety, we find this silence of quietness. And in that quietness is where safety comes out of, but oftentimes safety first shows up as fear. It first shows up as, oh my goodness, I'm going to die. Or, oh my goodness, I'm going to be by myself forever. Or, oh my goodness, nobody will never find me. And as we're looking at that and we're thinking about those the context, we think about choices, and we think about connection, our choices have been taken away from us. They've been taken away from us under the auspice of it's for our own good. This is to keep us safe, to keep us alive. But we've really lost our choices. Our choices now are, you know, we wear a mask when we go out in public or we don't go out in public, we're staying at home and we're really isolating. So one of the things that will give us more space or um, an expansion of space to where we can have more choices, realizing that even though our external choices might all been taken away from us, we still have internal choices. We can decide how we're gonna treat each other at home. We're gonna pick up the phone and call someone we haven't talked to in a while. Maybe it's our mom or our dad or our brother or sister or a child calling a friend or someone. So we're reaching out, we're gonna start trying to attempt to have connection. But to have real authentic connection, we have to have those choices. And we have to have the ability to expand and we have to change the context. And what's the context that we get now? We get one person says this, one person says this, somebody's saying this, and the, the context isn't clear. And for people who have experienced any level of developmental trauma, we really need black and white thinking. We need, this is what it is, this is what you do, and this is when it's gonna be over. It's the unknown that brings on more activation, which limits our choices and limits our connections. Makes us get angry at those that are in isolation with us, members in our family. We get angry at each other. We don't even know why. It just kind of flows out of us. So one of the things that I really like a lot are old fashioned hot water bottles. Your grandmother may have had one or your mom may have had one. Those old fashioned, they used to be pink. I don't think they come in any color but pink. 
They have a screw top on top and they're made of rubber. If you fill those up with warm water, not to where they're bloated, just put enough to where it's kind of squishy ishy inside. And you're able to lay down for a moment or have your child lay down for a moment. And in that moment, put the hot water bottle either under the right kidney first or the, and then you're gonna move it to the left about, after about five or 10 minutes. Or if you have two of them, they even work better. You just sit right there in the V, you have them under your kidneys. We often hear this thing called the cost of doing business. And the cost of doing business is how much it costs my system to think that we're safe. That cost of business is higher now than ever because of the threats that are coming at us. The kidney adrenals are one of the first places that dumps all sorts of chemicals into our bloodstream, shuts us down, gets us ready for fight and flight. It protects us for what's coming. This is just the same trauma. This, what we're going through now with the coronavirus is just the same kind of trauma hitting us. So if the cost of doing business is our nervous system and how much it takes for us to be regulated, the kidney adrenals are the cashiers. They're right there. So if we could just rest on those kidney adrenals, and while we're doing it, if we're capable just to be able to calm ourselves enough to feel the relaxation, to experience it, to just really notice that, oh, this moment, I have nothing else to do. The only thing in front of me is relaxation. And it's like taking a Tylenol for a headache or something. It has that same effect, but it's on our nervous system. And we're not introducing any chemicals or anything that's going to change uh, our chemistry. But actually, in fact, as our kidney adrenals begin to just get a little bit of comfort and relaxation, they're not going to pump so much of the chemicals that are great when we need them, but not so great on a day-to-day -day basis because they really tear down our other organs. They really affect the way we breathe. They, make, they affect our susceptibility, all of those things. And the more things we get affected with, we know puts us in a higher category of threat. The threat of if I catch the virus, maybe I'm not gonna get over it as quickly. Maybe I'm going to experience it differently. So I really suggest for adults, for parents, for everyone, take the time it takes. Order some, if you don't have them, find some hot water bottles. Um, if you don't have hot water bottles, some people use rice bags or something in cloth. Try not to use anything electrical because the electrical will have an, another effect that we don't want to add to your kidney adrenals. But just use the, the warm hot water bottles. Not so hot you burn yourself, just warm. Let it come to you. Allow your kidneys to rest and know that's all it takes. That's all it takes. And you're, now you're investing back into that cost of business so that you can have an extra moment when you get angry or you get upset or you get frustrated to breathe. Thank you, I appreciate you and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much for sharing such a practical strategy. Um, and I remember the hot water bottles and actually we have some at our center that uh, they have at um, Winners or Home Sense. I found. I'm sure you can find them online, but they've made them really cute. So you've still got the, the pink water bottle inside, but they've got these little fluffy, like teddy bear, koala cover. Oh, really? Yeah, to make them, you know, appealing, I guess, to kids and cute. Oh, how funny. Yeah. I dressed my hot water bottles today. <laughs> very sensory rich, I guess. So. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. that. That's, that's great. Yeah, but Excellent. I love the practicality of that, of working with our nervous system, because we know it's revving pretty high for a lot of people <clears throat> right now. And, uh, and that's not serving us well. So thank you so much for that. You're more than welcome. You're more than welcome.